I'm here with Ala P- um, Parasolova, uh, who's head of the Silk Road program for the UNWTO. Ala, lovely to have you with us. It's my real pleasure. Thank you for inviting me over to this conference. I really enjoyed it. Great stuff, great speakers, excellent content. It is timely, it is useful for Iran, and you know, once again, it's very timely because Iran is entering the new era in its tourism development. It's actually, it's it's not starting from the scratch but because it has always been a great destination from Marco Polo's times. Uh, but, you know, it was off the map for some time and now it's a challenge to get it back to the world tourism map and make it the destination of excellence. And the hotel sector plays the paramount role in that. So what, it's, what are the, um, the prospects for uh, tourism in this country, do you think? Well, UNWCO comes with good news because uh, the well, tourism as an economic sector shows excellent positive uh, growth, very sturdy growth, again, independently from the uh, crisis uh, conditions and so on, and all negative crises that we are living through. Uh, tourism is very resilient. It shows you know, permanent growth. And uh, as you know, last year we reported, uh, well, recently we reported that last year, uh, 1 billion 235 uh, travelers crossed the borders. It means that the tourism generates one out of every 11 jobs in the world. It accounts for 10% of the global GDP, 30% of export services. So it's uh, the most important, from our point of view, one of the most important economic activities in the world. It surpasses or equals the business volume of food production, oil export, and so on. So it's, we are really proud to, to, be, uh, to be the World Tourism Organization. We are coming here to Iran also because uh, it's our Silk Road <laughs> country. Yeah, now do tell us about the Silk Road project. Well, UNWTO, together with UNESCO, has been working on the development of the Silk Road tourism concept for the last 20 years, but six years ago, as a new momentum and golden moment for the Silk Road brand, and also demand for this kind of tourism uh, uh, in the world, uh, UNW created this special department or special program within uh, its structure. We work across three continents, 33 uh, committed countries across these three continents. Iran is quite active in our activity. Well, actually, Iran hosted our annual Silk Road Task Force meeting last year in West Azerbaijan of Iran and Urmia. Uh, the, Iran is an active member on this task force, uh, which is our working body within the Silk Road program. The Silk Road destinations have this unique opportunity to leverage from each other, joining their efforts in marketing and promotion, capacity building, destination management, and travel facilitation. These are the three key areas that we are working on at the UNW Silk Road program, which for us is the collaborative platform, the opportunity to bring together uh, so many countries and help them to work together because we are living you know, in such a complex world uh, when we all interdepend. And you know, for us at UNW, so Silk Road brand helps us to bring together the countries. And as you know, recently the Forbes magazine announced that you know, the Silk Road brand is the most powerful brand in the world, uh, even bigger than Disney or Coca-Cola. No, that's great. What about um, on the sustainability of tourism? Because that's a, an obvious ish- issue for countries, developing e- economies like uh, Iran, and how to develop sustainable. 
Well, it's a challenge not only for Iran, but for many countries around the world. It's a challenge for the, for the mankind in general. As you know, it's only in September last year, UN adopted the a new agenda for, for 2030 based on sustainable development principles. Uh, for tourism, it's a very important momentum because it's this year that you know we have just launched the UN International Year dedicated specifically for tourism, only for the third time in the history of the United Nations. And this time, it is the International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development. So. For us, it's an opportunity to unite all tourism forces to drive or to actually to push ahead the agenda of the sustainability, which is already is not just a choice for the mankind, but it's a survival mechanism. And do you find that industry is also moving forward and being, being uh, progressive when it comes to sustainability? There is a lot happening on the ground at all levels. I think it's very important that you know many governments put sustainability issues into their national tourism development plans. Not all of them, but more and more countries join in this uh, movement. It's also, there is also a lot happening on the grassroots level. There is much more awareness among the contemporary travel and the need for the responsible travel and you know contributing to local communities but also making tourism as not as a problem but as a solution for the for the local communities I think you know all this is summing up it's uh, well sustainability is not reached within one day it's a Rome is not built in one day I think you know when all these forces come together and I hope that the International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development will become this you know mechanism that will consolidate the, uh, the all you know uh, stakeholders place in the t tourism uh, process uh, you know in this effort to uh, put on the agenda and try to reach you know the sustainability goals I think there is a hope there is a big role that the hotel industry should be playing in everything in the well I, I think we and, and we've got our uh, space program as well mm -hmm. that I think you're involved with mm -hmm. in June this year in Nairobi yeah. Yes. Uh, the sustainable uh, buildings. Yes. Yes. So it's, uh, you know, I think a lot of positive changes is, has been happening and, you know, and we look forward to it very positively in the future. And I, I believe that Iran is now coming up very strongly and uh, there is a political will as we have heard well from the president res recently and also from the vice president in charge of uh, tourism. There is a political will. There is a new generation coming into a scenario uh, that is highly qualified. They they are very dynamic. They want. They understand the the contemporary traveler. I can, for example, <laughs> you know, mention that just few uh, weeks ago here in Tehran, there was a new hostel open that is called uh, uh, See You in Iran. And these guys are doing just the right business. They connect their philosophies to connect the uh, traveler to the locals through the experiences. So that's, you know, the, the modern trend uh, in tourism. Travelers wants, want to have authentic experiences, meet the locals, and have authentic food, uh, meet authentic people stay in the hotels that would have you know local character and i think you know this uh, this is a kind of a revolution in in tourism nowadays okay. listen one last question how have you found this conference and how useful is it for the industry uh, once again i'm very grateful to be here i think it's timely it's useful there were many in interesting discussions uh, there were different uh, <laughs> Uh, shapes and forms that you could enjoy, like you know, discussions, networks, uh, 
uh, networking uh, sessions. Also, the uh, panels were really useful. You could see different angles. You can also appreciate how complex is the situation in Iran is from, you know, from different angles of investment, legal procedures, and so on. But there is obviously. Uh, one thing that goes, well, comes up through all this discussion, there is the will, a desire, and, uh, well, search for cooperation. Fantastic. Well, listen, thank you so much, Ella, for joining us and for being part of this conference.